after the breakdown with those new kind of quirky, like warbly sounds and the new synth sounds you introduced. I mean, this is really, really nice. I mean, I, I mean, Samaha, uh, you should be proud of this. My only critical feedback, and I don't feel strongly about this, is the breakdown was really, really long. Um, but it does so much, and it's so beautiful. But I started getting a little kind of like, okay, where are we going? But that being said, the payoff after the breakdown was so good, I don't even feel that strongly about what I'm saying. Uh, so overall, I would say this is an A. Like, congrats. I, I believe that um, even though the break is long, the energy level goes up. You know, it's it, it's it's really like a kind of like transit track. You can go from in a set from like a kind of more dreamy organic world into more like synth-ish, you know, di dynamic with this track. So it's kind of like a mood shifter. There was one point at like 5.38, there's kind of like half kicks coming in. And I feel they're kind of like in between a full kick and in between a top kick. And I think... My only, only like question here would be like, would it be worth it to try having a little bit more heavier kick? So we introduce a little bit of sub on the dance floor in that section or something a little bit more thin. So it's not, you know, in the middle. That was the, my only feeling, um, but we'll definitely play this. And I think it sounds finished. It's beautiful. <music> So, so that whole section in terms of, you know, Melazic story, I feel that like there's a lot of question has asked, but there's no answers, you know? So it feels that there's like this, the guitar strums like, nah, nah. and it, it feels like th there would need to be an element, either another instrument or this another guitar layer answering this one. And we have very, very like gentle and delicate sounds so far, but it could be cool to have like one a little bit more meaner, darker kind of guide that comes to complement that that sweetness and have a little bit of the other side because the track started with that more like mysterious darker feel and um, this is where i stand there's a lot of melodic ideas which are just kind of being stacked on each other and none of the ideas are wrong but the, especially that dun, 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 that little organ thing it's just kind of like stacking on top of it it just it makes it feel crowded um, and I think, Mike, uh, the word that I talk a lot about in my uh, Patreon sessions and some of my videos, is, uh, which I think you were talking about, is call and response. You know, yeah. you should have parts having a conversation with each other uh, rather than them kind of all talking at once. <laughs> love everything about it like you really as this dubby feel you don't expect the vocal at all like I, I thought it would be an instrumental groover and then this vocal comes right at the drop you know it's got that kind of wow moment on the dance floor i feel like people like you know would love this surprise and it's not too much you know the vocal the way it's mixed it, it blends in in the story it bounces with everything else synths are great groove is good um there's a lot of reverb it's like it's like really really lush um not necessarily a criticism but it's taking a lot of space which is cool because it really sets that you're just yeah. kind of encompassed with this wide bass and a lot of yeah. reverb yeah. that's totally cool stylistic choice i would just personally be curious to see if you could cover out because i wonder if you this track i think it would work really well if you hear it on a tight system you know in a yeah. So, yeah. but if you were to play this in like a warehouse or something, I think it would get lost, you know, kind mm -hmm. of a lot in the reverb. Mm -hmm. um, so just a thought to explore. I mean, I, I really don't want you to mess with this too much because it's really, really nice. <laughs> That 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 synth arp is the first thing that we hear, and that's literally what what drives the train right from the beginning of the track. And when the hats are coming in, it feels that suddenly the synth disappears because the hat is a little bit too loud, and 
I think it will be cool to maybe reduce a little bit the volume of the hat just where it needs to be. So I think you can remove three dBs and it won't even you know show, but it will create space. Not every note was played at the same velocity. It had like dynamics in the ARP, you know, so it just felt like it was alive and moving. And that's one thing that's kind of easy to overlook, um, especially if you're new to ARPs where everything is just da 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 I think that this this track is like you know almost done in terms of like story arrangement all that stuff i believe there's room for a couple of layers and i can maybe like list down the the, the things I, I would add to complement the story um i feel that there could be at some point a little bit of a thicker more dominant hat somewhere where it's either like a little bit of a white noise hit or a little bit more like a, a open hat to tighten up a little bit more that housey feeling that's personal taste whenever the vocal is in there i'm like hooked there were a couple points where i thought maybe uh there could be a little time kind of aligning or quantizing it where it feels like it's a little bit off the beat here and there but at the same time it gives it a very human feel which is cool um sometimes when stuff is too quantized and too perfect it it loses some of that spirit but that <laughs> Fun. I would take this track, put it in my beatport card, check it out, put it in the USB, play it. <laughs> <laughs> really, like it's 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 done, you know. It's 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 like a very complete, very professional and mature um, sound design. Uh, I recognize uh, Ul's personality in this. And So sometimes, you know, if you have pads that are in a certain reverb bus, sending also the vocal a little bit in that bus helps put them in the same room, same space. And I think that could be a nice way to try to merge it more to the track than having the vocal sitting kind of on top of it. That's just something I would love to to, to try. Um, but that's just to be critical because that's what we do here today. But <laughs> honestly, it's a really top track. When when the vocal drops at the five minute and a half mark, it's like completing the whole story, songwriting skills, 10 on 10. Really nice groove, elements are nice, balance, everything is perfect. It doesn't have that thing that would make it like memorable to me. You know, if I walked away from a dance floor, or I, I wouldn't go out of my way to put this track on to listen to it. But as far as a functional track, if you want a track that fits that vibe, that's maybe the glue between two other tracks in a set, to sit, you know, if people are coming into a club, perfect track. Um, I think you did everything right. Um, I think it's, you know, I think it's, it's, it's fine as is, but... Uh, and I'm saying this because I know you've, you've sent uh, demos to Manjumasi before. You know, the big thing is if you wanted to take it to the next level, what's the thing that, how can you make it stand apart from the rest of the pack? And it doesn't have that, but for what it is, it 
checks all the boxes. Great track. You have to thank the devil for you, the biggest devil. That would be me. first section just the groove was really really nice i think the choice of the sample you know i saw the title of the check was was whitney's crack and then i said you know crack is whack and i i kind of started with kind of like a funny vibe wondering if you're going to use the sample i actually started feeling sad but i remember that interview was kind of one of the most embarrassing or low points of whitney houston's career when she was you know strung out and all this kind of stuff was happening so i think one thing to think about is what are you trying to communicate with your audience with the choice of sample that you're using? Is it, you know, something that just, you know, has a cool texture sound that has no meaning? Or is it like making fun of a legendary singer at her expense? I mean, there are words and they have meaning. So I, would, I think it's one thing to think about, um, you know, what are you trying to com communicate with the use of that sample? And um, if it is that, if it's kind of like having a joke on Whitney, then, uh, you know, I think it, it does that successfully. But for me, it, it kind of left a sour taste in my mouth. Mm.